to Sheila Bobby Handmade. My name is Caitlin and I'm known just about everywhere on the internet as Sheila Bobby and this is my podcast where we talk about knitting, crochet, yarn, all of that fun, fibery fun. And today I have both knitting and crochet for finished objects and works in progress. So lots of variety today. Now I am going to mention that it is warm in here and I am wearing a sweatshirt because I wanted to show you my sweatshirt in the acquisition section. So if I am glistening, sorry about that, um, let's talk about the finished object. So my first finished object is socks, of course, and here they are. These are my Jim, Jim? Why do I keep thinking that is incorrect? Jim's Lux Yarns stripey socks and whenever I hold up this green it makes it very very blue um not sure why I think it's just the cast of the bright neon green but this is the finished object for today so I'm gonna hold up the pink one so that you can take a look now something to note that this side that I'm showing you right now is where I carried up my yarns so if I flip my cuff down here. Inside here you will see I carried up my yarn every five rounds. So there is a little bit of a jog but not much. Um, I tried to tension it nicely to where that would not show. You can't really tell on the other side that there's a big difference. So not a big deal for me. But these are Jim Jim's Lux fibers. They were 50 gram skeins. The pink is ruby red and the green is serpentine. So both of these I purchased at the Fiber Festival in Raleigh. Oops, I am out of focus. You can do it camera. Boop boop. There we go. <laughs> Bought both of these. microphone and while I was walking I could not work on them easily in meetings as much because I had to carry up that yarn so they took a little bit longer um, but they are done they're going in a pile for my sister for Christmas or birthday or something like that. I'm just making her a bunch of socks and then adding to that pile. Um, my second finished object is crochet. And this I mentioned in the last episode that I would be casting on soon that my niece wanted a mushroom hat. Now I am going to forewarn you that this hat has been worn by a nine year old all week. So it is not perfect. It does fold up a little bit. But, ta-da, we have a mushroom hat. Um, this hat is a pattern called Toadstool Mushroom Hat by, I think it's Elise Aids, like E-A-D-E-S. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but I'll put all the information on the bottom of the screen so that you can use that. And it's like Wonder Wool, Wonderland Wool. It'll all be linked below. But anyway... This is a pattern, a crochet pattern. It was very easy to follow. Um, I will note that ruffles take forever. Um, I told my niece and all of my friends that I will probably never do another project with this many ruffles because this is insane. Um, by the end of it, I had double the amount of stitches that I have on the queen size blanket that I'm making for my friend. Double the amount of stitches. Um, 
in the last round of the ruffles. So lots and lots of crochet went into this. It took me a week. Um, I started this April 19th and finished it May 3rd. So you knitted in pieces. Um, it is a paid for pattern, so it won't release too much information, but you knit it in pieces, you knit the hat, you knit as many of the dots that you want, and then the ruffle is connected on the inside. So you can see all of my sewing. And what I did is because, sorry, I bumped the microphone today. I think it's too close. Now I'm fuzzy. Let me move the microphone back. That should help. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so what I did with the ruffles is I took them and laid them how I would like them. And then I stitched down each ruffle. So that for the top of the hat. Um, I used a five millimeter hook, which is an H hook here in the US. That is what I used for the entire project. I think I probably would have gone down a hook size, but it works. She's happy with it. I'm happy with it. So that is that project. I think that was all. Oh, the yarn that I used is Loops and Threads Impeccable Yarn from Michaels and the white is the white color, the red is cherry, and the cream color is called Erin. So those are the colors that I used. I put all the information on the Ravelry page of how much exactly it took me to make this hat because that is not included in the pattern. They just say to use a worsted weight yarn like Red Heart and it doesn't give the information on how much you need for each color. So I've included that in the Ravelry page so that if anyone wants to make this hat, they can get that information. It took me one and a half skeins of the cream to make the ruffle. It took about a third of a skein for the red and then just 20 grams for the circles that I made. So that is my second finished object. So we will scoot on in to works in progress, which I have a couple, let me see. I have four for you today, so let's jump in and check on the Ocean Waves blanket and the progress that I've gotten on that. Okay, so I am making a blanket as a commission for my friend, and he wants a queen size blanket, 90 by 100 inches, and I'm using I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby in various colors. If you want to know the exact colors that I'm using, please check out the Ravelry page. I believe I've updated that with the exact colors that I'm using and we'll include all the yardage and that sort of stuff um, when it is finished. But I don't want to repeat the colors every week because this will be a long-term project. So last week we talked about how I had miscalculated my rows and so I slowed down a little bit and prioritized some of my other projects and this is how many I have worked on since then. So I was on the first stripe of the dark green the last time I recorded. So I finished the stripe and then have added all the way up to the light gray. So I think that's what two, four, six ish rounds rows. So it is quite a large blanket. So it will get larger and larger. So I will just be, just show you how much progress I have made from the stitch marker from here on out, just because it is such a large blanket. And then when I finish it, I'll show you it in its full glory. But it is just a simple ripple blanket. This pattern is by Lauren Brown. It is a free pattern. And it is all the information of how many stitches I started with, like the, my starting chain, all of that information will be on the Ravelry page, so check that out if you want more information, but just wanted to show you that that much progress has gotten done in the past two weeks. My next finished, finished object? No. My next work in progress is in a Stitching the High Notes bag. This is one of my first bags that I ever purchased when I began knitting, and this is my tweed hat. And this week I had the Gems Lux yarn socks so they was, were stripy with two different colors so they were not walkable um, I wasn't able to walk while 
listening to a book for work. And so I couldn't bring those socks. And then my other sock is a pattern sock. So I needed something stockinette to be able to walk and knit with. So I pulled out my tweed hat, which is just kind of my emergency stockinette. And I did quite a bit on that, a couple inches. So this is a muscle burr muscle blur tee. My words today. I am sorry, y'all. This is a muscle burr hat by Yazilda Teague. Um, and it is, like I said, just a long-term emergency, um, stockinette hat. And I got quite a bit going on that. The yarn, I'll show you it in its cake form, is Long Dog Yarn in her tweed sock base. 85 Superwash Merino, 15% Neps, and it is in the colorway McKenzie. And this is her sock colorway or colorway from her, um, what is that called? Outlander, the Outlander series. So it's McKenzie from Outlander, which I believe is the last name. I don't watch Outlander or read Outlander, so I'm not 100% sure, but I worked quite a bit on that this week and we'll probably pull it out next week as well and get a little bit more done on it. We'll see because I do have a new sock cast on that is 100% vanilla, easy going. So we'll see if we'll see this more um, next episode. But I'm going to go ahead and move up my stitch marker so that it is ready to go. I think that's all the details on that. Just a little bit of stockinette going um, for the walking process. The next work in progress is one that you saw. It lives in my Fat Squirrel Ghosty Purple Bag, and it is the sock that I showed you last episode where I wasn't sure about the texture, and as the sock has grown, it's perfect. Love it. Um, so I will show you the yarn first. So the yarn is And then we have a mini, which is a chestnut brown colorway. And I'm working on the Arrowroot Socks pattern by Kelly Menzies, or also known as Roro and Cades here on YouTube. And the pattern, try not to hit the microphone with the cord, the pattern is this beautiful detail that kind of reminded me of like trees. It reminded me of the pine tree vibes. So I went with it. It is a little bit textured, so not the most visible for the pattern. And then um, I've done the pattern on the front and back and then release the cord so that we can see I am currently about halfway through the foot. I am marking my beginning of foot on the actual foot of the sock because that way I can count the stitches rather than counting the um, pattern repeats. So this is on the 64. She has quite a few stitch counts in this pattern, but I'm doing the 64 stitch count. And I think that is pretty much all the details on that as well. Um, I talked about that. This may be a sock for me, maybe a sock for my sister, but it indeed does not fit my foot. I cannot get the cuff over my ankle. So these will go into my sister's pile for the future sock gifting. Um, these are fun. The pattern is, it's just a four row repeat. So it's fairly easy to remember that repeat and do it over and over again. I did it at the local yarn shop this past Saturday and was able to talk and converse and do that pattern. So easy to read, loving that one. And um, we'll have that one most likely finished by the next podcast. Um, the last work in progress that I have is my new vanilla one. This is in a bag that my mom got me for Christmas or my birthday. Um, it is Twist Fiber Studio. And I mentioned I'm not sure if they are still in business 
for making bags, but of course it's got bunnies with eyelashes on it. And side note, tangent, <laughs> I'm excited about a bag that I purchased from the Fiber Fox Studio or Fox Fiber Studio. I'd never heard of them before, but someone, I was watching a podcast, um, they mentioned that uh, Dyer, and they had bags that were woodland themed, and there was a sassy, suspicious bunny, and I'm so excited to get that in the mail. Um, it has shipped, but it's coming from the UK, so it'll take a little while. But I'm excited to get that bag because the little bunnies on there just look so suspicious. But anyway, <laughs> um, I started a new sock last night, and so I will show you it first, and then we'll talk about the yarn, even though I have no idea what the actual yarn is. So, gotta give me a little bit more slack here. So this is a vanilla sock that I have started. I am using an orange mini, which I do not know where it came from, what the dyer is. It is just an orange mini. And this yarn I know is Hedgehog Fibers. I'm assuming one of their sock bases, but I do not know the colorway because it was gifted to me from someone's scraps. So I'm calling these, I'm wrapped around the microphone again, <laughs> I'm calling these my Karen socks because this came from Karen's stash. So she brought some yarn to the local yarn shop um, yesterday and had a whole bunch of sock-like yarn, a couple of DK as well, and said free to a good home. So this one jumped right in my bag and I said, I needed a new vanilla sock anyway. So this is, this is it. Um, so we do know that it's hedgehog fibers, but I do not know the colorway or anything like that. Um, and all of Hedgehog's colors um, are bright and colorful and all different rainbows of colors. So it's hard to tell just by looking at it. And then the mini is just a mini that I had in my stash that I'm using most likely for cuffs and toes. May just be cuffs, depends on how I feel when I get there. So this is just a vanilla sock. It is currently on my stitch count, so it'll likely be socks for me. I will link down below where this is from. I can never remember it off the top of my head. So the Progress Keeper will be linked below or the Progress Keeper Maker. I don't think she has the little mushrooms right now. But anyway, that is my last work in progress. Just a vanilla sock that will be my vanilla sock knitting for the next two weeks. Shoo, it is getting warm in here. So let's talk about acquisitions. So I'm wearing a crew neck sweatshirt and as you can see, it's got my logo on it. So I, of course, am a huge fan of the <laughs> summer sock camp that is coming up at the end of the month. And so the crazy sock lady who runs the um, summer sock camp make along, she released merch for this year's logo. And I love crew necks right now, just like an oversized, this one's not too super oversized, but like an oversized crew neck are my favorite right now. Cozy pants, crew neck, that's my vibes. And so I was looking at the logo and all of the ones were on the front, but they're quite large. Like the, the design was quite large and I prefer my front of my clothes to not have a large design, but it could be on the back. So with the shop that she's using, you could customize it. So I moved the logo to the back, which I will show you in a minute. And then you had an area that you could upload your own. And so I uploaded my logo to this. So I have a merch. And then let's see if I can turn around. I may not be able to show you the best, but I do have the Summer Sock Camp logo on the back. All right. <laughs> so that is part of my acquisitions is I got this sweatshirt. And then the last acquisition that I have is Yarnable for May. If you have not already opened up your Yarnable or have not received it yet, you may not want to look at it right now. So this is the last bit for today. So if you don't want to see Yarnable, thanks for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. But if you do want to stick around and see what I got for Yarnable this month, stick around. So this month we got in extras a lemonade drink packet and it seems like it's like a little like actual packet in there and then you can just like scoop out. I haven't actually opened it all the way 
but will be soon with how warm it is getting. Um, so yeah, it's just a packet of lemonade drink. There's also this SNS Dips Raspberry Lemonade flavor. Let's see if it'll focus on it to give you any of the details. There we go. So it is a flavored powder that you add cream cheese and whipped topping to to have as kind of a flavored dip or cream cheese or something along those lines. I have one of these that I think is the s'mores flavor from last summer that I haven't used yet either. So should probably make both of those. And then the last extra in the package this month were eight handmade or I made this um, cotton labels. So we'll be adding some of these to my progress progress projects. For the actual yarn, we have a really fun colorway. It's called Berry Citrus Bliss. And it reminds me of Raspberry Lemonade. These will likely become socks for my niece because these are her colorway or my nephew would also love these colors as well. So very cute, very pretty, very summery time. And that is the last acquisition. So I am going to head inside because it is warm. Let's see, what is the temperature? It says it's 78 degrees in here. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but pretty warm. Anyway, it is warm. So I'm going to head inside where the air conditioner is and cool off. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you guys in two weeks and I believe, let me check really quick. That would be getting close to summer sock camp. So I may be talking about some of my summer sock camp plans. If you are doing summer sock camp, I am linking the crazy sock ladies video talking about the make along and all of her merch and that sort of stuff for it. If you would like to join along in that make along, it's a blast. I enjoy it every year. This will be my fourth year participating. So lots and lots of fun. Let me see. Today's the fifth for me. So I record on Sundays, but typically I release on Thursdays. Um, that's just a, a good day for me. So the next time that I record is the 19th and it is that Friday that the summer sock camp starts. So definitely we'll be talking about some of my plans and show you some of the goody yarn that I will be um, winding up and casting on. So again, thank you for hanging out. If you liked this video and want to see more, want to see what I get up to with Summer Sock Camp, please click the subscribe button down below so that you can be alerted when I have new videos and it'll show up in your feed and let YouTube know that you like my videos. And then if you also feel so inclined, please feel free to comment or click the like button. That also lets YouTube know that you enjoy my videos and will show my content to you later in the season. I don't know, later. <laughs> in the algorithm. All right, I'm going to head out since I am obviously getting warm delirious. I will see you guys next time. Bye.